is a comedian whose album, Soak Up the Night, is available now. Please welcome the very funny Matt Bronger. All right, thank you. Thanks very much. Um, well, I'm kind of like a lightning rod for awkwardness, kind of an awkward rod. Uh, it just finds me. I'll give you an example. Well, first off, I am the master at saying the wrong thing to women accidentally, okay? I am moi good, like black belt level, okay? <laughs> Like, I was doing karaoke in an after-hours bar in Chicago, where I used to live, right? Doing a stellar rendition of Oops, I Did It Again. Like, I nailed it, you know what I mean? Like, I was Britney, right? So, this girl comes up to me, and she's like, hey, that was really funny. Hi, I'm Sarah, right? Comes up to me, gives me rhythm. And I could have said any number of things to make her like me, or be my friend, or maybe more, the night was young. But instead, what my brain told my mouth to say, and my mouth was like, screw it, I hate this guy too. What I literally said to a girl was, thanks a lot, where do you live? <laughs> what? What's the worst thing you can ever say to a girl? It's probably that. Look at how tall I am. In crowded bars, I look like I'm trying to chew on girls' heads, right? <laughs> where do you live? And I didn't say, oh, do you live around here? Are we neighbors? That would have been acceptable. No, I said, where do you live? <laughs> where exactly do you live? What's the address? I'm gonna hang out in the closet without a shirt and a Viking helmet. Honk your boobies, check out my balls. Okay, no. I didn't do the last two things, but it would not have been creepier if I had. It wouldn't have been creepier if I was carrying rope and freaking duct tape when I said that. Where do you live? All of a sudden I have a humpback and a hook for a hand. Chloroform rag coming at you. <laughs> Put her in the van with the others. Why? It's mostly, I gotta say, it's mostly because of the drinking, right? The heavy drinking. I obviously do with a body shape like this, but I've actually, I've had to cut down just to improve my hangovers. It's the only reason. Only reason I've cut down on drinking at all. But it's just because if you notice how bad your hangovers get in your 30s, like once you hit 30, they're brutal. In your 20s, hangovers in your 20s, you're like a cartoon character that was in a barn that exploded. You're singed, but you're okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> Like hangovers in your 20s, you know, you're just, it doesn't even affect you. It's like, oh my God, my head's on fire. There's frogs in my stomach. What'd I do last night? All right, right? <laughs> in your 30s, hangovers in your 30s, you're like, I'm gonna have a stroke, I think. My, <laughs> my brain is squeezing itself. My arms are numb. This is not good. In your 20s, you make plans for your hangovers. You're like, oh, I'm, I'm not doing nothing except eating a whole bag of family-sized ruffles, A, and B, watching all the Rockies. Every Rocky movie, that's it. In your 30s, you're like, I think I'll go to a food court so that someone will catch me when I have the inevitable stroke I'm going to have at 4 p.m. today, without question. So I am single and I live alone. Most of you guessed correctly. Well done. Um, but I'm fine with it, because I think, I honestly think being in long-term relationships can make you stupid, especially if you're a guy. Like, I was talking to a married friend, and he's like, so what do you, you live alone, you do a lot of cooking? cook for yourself? I'm like, yeah, dummy, I'm not, it's not the 50s. Did you step up an episode of Mad Men? What are you talking about? And I cook for myself. But I didn't say that, right? So I didn't want to confront him. So I was just like, well, I don't know, I eat a lot of Hungry Man dinners, huh? right? I don't, they're made of salt, don't eat those. But I didn't even say that. I didn't even say that. I made a perfect Freudian slip and accidentally said, well, I eat a lot of Lonely Man dinners. Oh, <laughs> Lonely Man dinners? is what I said that I eat, which was dead on. I eat a lot of lonely man dinners. <laughs> which is what all TV dinners should be called. I wanna see the ad for lonely man brand TV dinners. Just a lumberjack in a cabin by himself, <laughs> looking out the window at a future he'll never have, <laughs> with a tear running on his rapidly graying beard. He's like 32, it shouldn't be gray, right? And the theme song kicks in. No need to open a can. Grab yourself a lonely man. Right? <laughs> and then a faraway shot of the cabin and a single gunshot. Lonely man. <laughs> But they stay on the cabin a long time after the shot. So you're like, did he shoot himself or the fireplace? I don't know. What happened to Lonely Man Lumberjack? Thank you guys so much. That was great. Thank you. Great job. Yeah, fun, Very nice. Matt Bronger, everybody. That's our show. We're a 
tall drink of water. I Let's am. fight. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Never. I want to thank all my guests, Chris Colfer. Our thanks also to Charlene Yee for being here. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Steve Cropper. Andy Richter, Jimmy Vino, Basic Cable Band. Good night, everybody. That night, they were the Basic Campbell Band. If you had been watching a little more carefully, you would have seen this very subtle product integration. We have Jimmy Vino and the Basic Campbell Band. <laughs>